I'm encouraged that this is at least happening in the light of day. Uh, bill proposals like this one traditionally in this body of legislature, I would consider this so politically hot button uh, that it would be jammed into a big ugly or a budget bill. So I'm very encouraged uh, through you, Madam Speaker, that this is brought out and we can have this debate while it is on inauguration day. Um, but then I, I did ask counsel, and it turns out that this actually has to be debated as a standalone bill and can't be jammed into one of those. Uh, even still, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be having this dialogue with you. Uh, what, what is the overall goal of this constitutional amendment? To improve upon the amendment that was uh, passed back in 2014 and approved by the voters to create a fair, process to apportion, uh, well, to, to, to count the good residents of the state of New York, and so that districts are created by a independent commission, not just this body, and uh, we can come up with districts that are representative of the people of the state of New York, and uh, as I said before, I talked about some of the principles that are in the amendment. Um, the districts were, you know, should be um, substantially or, or uh, as, as great as possible, equal in size. And I'm just uh, listing things now, but why don't you go on, Mr. Walsh? Thank you, uh, Mr. Sponsor. And I know uh, you've yielded for many questions from my colleagues. I appreciate that. I think it's important to have this dialogue in the open. Uh, in, your, in your opening explanation of the bill, you did say a couple of things that uh, you know sort of perked my interest. One of them is that there were technical issues uh, with the United or with the New York State Constitution that needed to be changed here, what in this piece of uh, joint resolution is the technical change? Some of the technical changes are the date changes, uh, the removal of the word "alien" in various places. Um, that's a couple. Okay, so you would consider uh, removing the word, the word alien, which means someone who is not legally a United States citizen, but dwelling in the state of New York, a technical change? Yes. Okay, and um, you also used, you know, having redistricting happen as part of an orderly uh, process or happen in an orderly way. Uh, what in the old system that was validated by 1.7 million New Yorkers was disorderly? If I could just uh, um, augment my prior response, because we've been counting folks. Um, so by removing the word alien, I'm saying it's technical because that's the process by which we have been counting previously. Um, so sorry, Mr. Walchick, I just wanted to augment that. But uh, could you repeat your current question? I would, and I would love to circle back to uh, non-citizen uh, residents of New York State in a moment as well. But in your in your opening explanation, you said you're changing the New York State Constitution so that we can redistrict in a more orderly way. What did you mean by by that? And what was disorderly about the way that our Constitution was functioning in the last redistricting? Well, it depends on whether you're asking me about orderly based upon 2010. Um, which was before even the prior amendment, or whether you're asking me on orderly and how we change the current amendment that was uh, in 2014. So to take the latter, if you want to talk about uh, orderly, I would point out is probably the most, one of the most important things is the new timeframes, which uh, respect our new political calendar and I think create a more orderly and workable structure within that political calendar. I, I would love to continue talking about the uh, the calendar since you brought it up. So there's a, uh, a timing obviously here that is in line with the census and that governs our, or feeds into the data that uh, would make for our redistricting process. What's the, what's the purpose of using the, the big picture per purpose of using the federal census's numbers in our redistricting? The big picture purpose, because that is the way by which this country counts uh, inhabitants and provides data uh, so that therefore we can ensure the uh, you know, constitutional mandate of uh, one person, one vote. 
to the extent practicable and under you know current federal law and constitutional law. Uh, so uh, the census has been uh, you know the process by which we come up with that data. Okay, I, um, if if it's for consideration of one person, one vote. Uh, then why in redistricting would you include those who are not eligible to vote? One, one person, one vote, meaning that the inhabitants of the state of New York within the districts shall have substantially similar district size. You know, if you go back in history, um, we had all types of models that I do not believe would fulfill that. You know, representation by county. We have counties with millions of people and we have counties with you know tens of thousands of people. Sure. So uh, that that certainly if I could, uh, and, wouldn't and be, I, I apologize yeah. for cutting you off, but just sure. because we have been limited in our time for a debate here, I I, I want to get through these questions okay. because I think they're important to get on the record. And I, I want to point out that uh, one person, one vote is a very important principle and one that we subscribe to as United States citizens in our in our districting process, and we swear an oath to the Constitution. Uh, you're counting in districts here. You're removing what you call a technical amendment, um, a aliens from not being uh, counted, right? So they're going to be counted in a district. But you used inhabitants in your rebut there. At the same time, you're taking prisoners and you're counting them in a place where they don't actually live and reside. So is it is it about people who live and reside in an area and they're going to have representation in the Senate and the Assembly and the Congress? Or is it about people who are eligible to vote? I, I, I'm having a hard time understanding the principle here. Sure. It's about the people who live within the state of New York. So there are different standards. So for the standards of incarcerated people, um, as was passed by the legislature in 2010, um, paraphrasing, I could quote the exact language for you uh, if you want within this amendment, but I believe it is to the extent practicable, practicable counted at their last known address. Okay. So uh, prior to this, uh, through you, Madam Speaker, there were uh, joint requirements for, and I know the, the term has been debated today um, about this independent redistricting commission uh, I, I think bipartisan is probably a better way to talk about what it was in the past. Partisan is probably the best way to describe what it is proposed to be in the future. Uh, there was a Republican and a Democrat uh, co-commissioner of this commission. Uh, that requirement has been removed. Can you describe why that's been? The selection of the... Um the executive directors was similarly partisan uh, as was the um, voting requirements. It was based upon the who the uh, majority leader of the Senate and the majority lead, leader of the Speaker were. And so I would refer back once again to uh, the language I quoted earlier from the Common Cause, Nyberg, and Reinvent Albany um, memo they actually refer to both. It does away with the partisan co-directors of the redistricting commission and eliminates the partisan commission voting rules. So in our, our argument, both things were unnecessarily partisan. The panel is bipartisan. Right. Neither party has a majority. So by requiring a majority to elect those folks, it is bipartisan. Uh, through you, Madam Speaker, I, I think another way to read that, and I appreciate you reading that quote off, I think another way to read that uh, if you're removing the partisanship, then you're also removing the bipartisanship. If you say that there has to be, like we've selected these executive directors to be one Republican and one Democrat, that's partisan, but it's also bipartisan. It's bi-party, but we've also made sure that there are one represented from each party, and that is the requirement that's being removed. But to move along through you, Madam Speaker, why change the maximum amount of senators that can be represented in one single county? Uh, is this what's the what's the purpose of that in this legislation? We don't count that way. 
we don't necessarily, while we respect jurisdictional boundaries, and I cited the principles before, and it is one of the principles, we do not um, draw districts just based purely upon political boundaries. If we did, then you'd have, you know, one senator from Brooklyn and one senator from Rockland County, and, and that certainly wouldn't uh, pass constitutional muster. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, with, with time quickly coming to a, a close, I'd like to go on the bill. On the bill. I appreciate my colleagues' uh, responses. Well, we may have dif disagreements about uh, what it looks to be bipartisan or independent. Our current system certainly is not perfect. The way that the New York State Constitution writes this was by political party, party bosses here in Albany, but it guaranteed that there was at least bipartisan representation in the redistricting process. On inauguration day, when we get to hear our president, Joe Biden, talking about the nation coming together, talking about how he represents all people, no matter what party, whether they voted for him or not, I think it's an excellent message and one that needs to be heard in this chamber. Because it's not about being Republican or Democrat, it's about balance of power, it's about equal representation, it's about some of the principles that the sponsor of this joint resolution said right here. But we need to make sure that they come together. A truly independent, you know, as one of my colleagues pointed out, a truly independent commission would be very difficult to put together, especially in the, in the climate that Albany has, picking truly independent members. I mean, it's party bosses that run it here. But what we can do, we can make sure that there's checks and balances. We can make sure that Democrats, Republicans, upstaters, downstaters are all represented on the commission. That's something that at least the parties bring to the table. You want to create trust in government? You want to have a, a more trusting citizenry of what we do in this chamber and in this state house? Create more balance. And if you want to win more seats, I mean, obviously, this legislation, and I asked the sponsor right up front, what was the goal here? The goal here is political. The goal here is to have more Democrats elected to the New York State Assembly and to the New York State Senate. You know how to do that? Go knock on more doors than your opponent. Work harder. Do better work here that gets the incumbents back in. You don't have to fix the race. You don't have to fix the rules. We've already got a system that is competitive and makes it better for the citizens of New York. People are frustrated with our government, but this isn't the way to fix that by saying one party gets to pick the, the district lines? You can't just remove our seats, change the lines around, gerrymander districts, cut our debate time from 30 minutes to 15 minutes, and expect New Yorkers not to continue to leave in droves. I got used to saying 19 million New Yorkers, and then I had to scratch it out when I wrote it down here. It's actually 17.5 million New Yorkers. We're counting them differently. We keep up these policies. I mean, maybe by the end of the session, I'll be saying 15 million New Yorkers. Florida's growing, and here's a reason why. So to my colleagues, especially to the new colleagues of this body, and I don't care whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you are low on the political totem pole here. And party bosses, now just Democrat party bosses, when they draw the lines, you are last in line. So think about that if you're a Democrat from New York City that just got elected, duly elected, by the people in your district. Your district lines are about to change. And not an independent commission, not even a bipartisan commission anymore, is going to decide what your district looks like next time around. And to the people of the state of New York, this has already passed the Senate. This joint resolution is about to pass this House. They wouldn't put it on the floor if they didn't know they have the votes, would they, Mr. Speaker or Madam Speaker? So one party rule is going to give it to you. And it's your job, the citizens of New York, when you see this on the ballot, to flip your ballot over and be the final check and balance on this government. We can keep the old system that was not perfect, was not great, still allowed gerrymandered districts, but at least had bipartisan checks and balances in drawing the lines for the Congress, for the Senate, and for the Assembly. But it's up to you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I vote no.